How's it going guys? Welcome to the FM Dugout. It's British Steel Time with Wraith Rovers in Scottish Labrokes Championship. And today is the Iron Brew League Challenge Cup quarter final against Cliftonville. Um, now we are taking the trip across to Northern Ireland for this and uh, looking potentially uh, to make the semi-final of this competition for the second time in the series. And uh, yeah, obviously we haven't won this yet, so I think we're in a very strong position. At the moment in the league, we are four points clear um, and it's going fairly well. And as I said before in the last episode, uh, the last thing I really want to do is get out of this league winning it um, and closing that one off and then not being able to win the League Challenge Cup um, unless I take another job in one of the lower divisions. So it's kind of one of these awkward situations that I really have to <laughs> to get through and win. And if I don't, then do I really want to win the league? Um, it's awkward. It's going to be really, really awkward if that happens. And I think probably what would happen if I did win the league and didn't win this cup, I just have to leave it and maybe come back, you know, years from now um, in, in the game. Um, but yeah, things are going well, I suppose, on the park. Um, since the last episode, we have had, what, three games? Uh, four games, sorry. Um, we've had three wins and a draw. Uh, East Fife at home, 1-0 win there. Lewis Vaughan scoring in the 33rd minute. Uh, pretty close affair, that game, actually. Um, again, you know, kind of wanting to win by more than one goal. Didn't manage it there. 2-1 uh, against St Mirren away from home. It was a pretty tough game. Uh, we got ourselves 2-0 up. And uh, and then, again, as we did with St Mirren before, we were in a really good position and just kind of let them back in. I think the last time it was 3-2. Yeah, it was. Um, then a 2-0 win at home against old club Stirling Albion. Lewis Vaughan and Stevenson on the score sheet. And then a one-all draw away to Alloa, which was quite a tough game. Um, pretty even. We won the first half, they won the second. And um, really, it could have gone any way at the end. So we dropped points there. And um, it allowed Queen of the South to close in a bit with us. Uh, coincidentally, Queen of the South and Partick Thistle managed to get through to the semi-final yesterday, uh, as did TNS uh, of the Welsh Premier League. So we're in a position where I think if we win today, we kind of know roughly what we're going to face. And um, I'm fairly confident that we can do it. But cup competitions are cup competitions. You can lose on the day, even though you're the stronger team. That's just how things can go. In terms of our player stats, you can see Lewis Vaughan is still top in the charts with goal scorer, highest rating and most assists as well. Um, which is really quite interesting because it means that he is he's, you know, very productive in the squad. Conor McGrandall's on 91% pass completion. Um, nice to see that his skills have kind of levelled off. They were dropping down quite a bit, um, probably as he's adjusting to playing in the Scottish Championship. Um, no news in terms of any signings. Uh, we've got some players coming back from injury. Uh, Jack Harper picked up an injury, so he's out for today. Um, but we do have Scott Fraser and Chris Johnson back in the attacking midfield position. Dale Helson fit enough to make the bench um, where he'll start from. Uh, Hugo Logan of Celtic is uh, cup-tied for today's game. Uh, he's still not really producing the kind of performances I was hoping um, I would get from him. So he is pretty much just making up the numbers in the squad. There's also this guy. Um, and at first I thought, oh dear, not going to be able to play him. Uh, a youth player who is uh, doing rather well. He's away with the Turkey under-19s. And um, the last game of Friendly, he scored and played 8.2. And uh, he certainly looks to be um, in the mould of, of a decent technical defender. Um, physicals are lacking a bit. I looked at this and thought, oh great, won't be able to play him. But uh, it turns out that actually under the nationalities, he does have Scottish. So we do potentially have uh, the ability to play him. I may look to get him involved at some point in the season. I don't know uh, quite where we'll do it. There's not really much margin for error. So, yeah, as I say, I think things are going fairly well. The only thing that is worrying me quite a bit is the money. I mean, it's, it's seriously dropping um, and this certainly this competition I don't believe gives 
um, any yeah you don't get any money if you win in this round you only get it if you get put out uh, likewise in the semi-final and the final it's only 22k when you get to the end so it's not going to make a massive difference to us and I think we really need to look at getting a decent run in the Scottish Cup if we're going to get this balance kind of sorted out but again this is a challenge for the British Steel kind of challenge <laughs> um, where we're trying to win competitions across five nations and um, you know it's not one sort of club type save that I would want to build a lasting legacy at Wraith um, if I feel I've achieved what I can achieve in a short space of time I probably will just move on um, and then and we just progress from there we are in a good position um, this is a major, major game. If, if I've got any real aspirations for finishing off this challenge completely, then this is exactly the sort of game I have to win away from home. Cliftonville are sitting fifth in the Northern Irish Danske Premiership and uh, they are on a three-game losing streak, albeit all games are away from home. So they'll probably get a bit of comfort from playing at home against us today. And uh, without any further ado, I think we'll push on into the match. So 4-4-2 predicted lineup today for Cliftonville. Um, the press seem to think that uh, I am slight favourites for it. Um, I don't know. Um, you, you never can tell with these kind of games. Um, I would have preferred to have had a full squad to pick from if I'd had uh, Jack Harper available for selection, but this is what we have to go with. Chris Johnson, I mean, he's, he's a good player, but he's a winger. Um, he, he's not really suited to playing in the middle. The skills are pretty decent, but he's just not um, as comfortable playing in the middle of the park. Um, TJ Yoma and Osho still managing to do well um, at centre-back, but you can see... Osho is not really progressing at the club. Uh, Ioma doing a little bit better. Um, I suppose that's obviously the problem, bringing in players from, from better sides, is that they're, they're probably not going to progress their career um, very well. Um, but anyway, that is the formation. That is the team. Uh, the job at hand is making it to the semi-final of the Challenge Cup at... Uh, at the first time of asking for Wraith Rovers and once again I've forgotten to tell my players to close down the central midfield um, let's see what we can say uh, we are the favourites that's made people switch off once again potential banana skin with our uh, with our team talk so yeah it's um, the last time I think we had a trip to Northern Ireland, we managed to put out, was it Linfield or Stirling Albion? Um, I think that was an extra time one, wasn't it? Or was it penalties? I can't remember now. Uh, it was a couple of seasons ago, but um, I'm pretty sure we did. I think it might have been the third episode of the series as um, the game gets underway. So I think the key thing is probably to score first. And I really don't want to, to push too hard. So control will be our mentality. As Johnston takes the in-swinging corner. Mayhem in the penalty box there. And uh, the ball breaks free. Just checking the highlight speeds are correct. And that was a potential chance there. I mean, it's, it's counted it as a clear-cut chance. I don't know if I would have... Uh, I'm not sure how Vaughn was meant to put the ball in the back of the net with about eight defenders in front of him. Um... So six minutes on the clock, plenty of possession, a couple of chances, none on target yet. I'm fairly comfortable, but you know these things change very, very quickly, and uh, it does look as though we're in, in a good position. But we do need to try and get something. So let, let's give our, our team a little bit of encouragement and see if we can craft out a chance. As with um, the other series, if I feel there's not enough highlights. I probably will change to extended as Fraser gets the ball played through to him and that is a weak finish. Eight shots on target in this game and um, if that's the best one to kind of show, yeah, not exactly great from our point of view. 
We're approaching half time now, absolutely dominant. Most of the possession, two thirds of the possession, all the shots, and um, really we, we need to turn that possession and dominance into a lead here. And half time approaching, this would be a great time to do it as McGrandles finds Johnston, slides it to Stevenson, short passing, finding players. Nice move, Vaughn Johnston. And it's fed through to Vaughn, surely. The keeper somehow keeps that out. Cracking save from him, but really Vaughn should have put his laces through that. He side-footed it with his weaker foot. Placed it well enough. But, uh, yeah, i, I got to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed we haven't scored in this first half. Um, I, I, again, I do not want to go attacking. I do not want to risk getting hit on the counter. Um... We've had every part of the play, really, and uh, it would be pretty annoying to go attacking to try and get a goal and then concede um, a sort of sucker punch attack as we break forward again. Johnson will surely slide us through to Vaughan. Must be. And Vaughan puts it in the back of the net. And that really is, well, exactly what we wanted at this stage now. Uh, I did not want to go in at 0-0 because I was in two minds as to whether to say you aren't doing well enough or try and encourage them. Vaughn keeping his head there and just guiding it to the side of the goalkeeper. 1-0. Um, so I think, again, you know, it goes without saying we, we have to try and, and get more out of the players in the second half. Um, but the tactics are working. Uh, definitely working the players are, are, are comfortable but uh, one goal leads aren't exactly secure so we will we'll be responsible at the back but we'll still try uh, to get the goal now I've just seen Cliftonville have gone to 4-3-3 now this is exactly what Aloha did in the last game and that overloaded kind of um, central defence versus centre forward really messed us up in that last game so I'm actually going to pull back um, a little bit here. Uh, I think Stevenson's not too bad there. So I'm going to go to this um, because, as I say, I really, really don't want um, to get myself into a position where, you know, we get that overload and, and one of the central defenders goes to one of the, the kind of wider strikers and just leaves his man unmarked. Um, oh dear that's a bad miss from Osho there uh, but it's actually led to a chance as Ioma thumps it up the part and Vaughn Mooney is definitely earning his keep this week here uh, 11 saves from the keeper in today's game and uh, certainly stopping this game from being any worse than 1-0 as uh, Cliftonville with the corner and they've scored and this is exactly what happens in this game my goodness um, I'm just going to wait to see if Cliftonville actually change back to a 4-4-2 uh, I, I could do without this game going to extra time here corner drifting in and um, it looks as though Yoma has lost his man yeah, he's holding his, his head in his hands there um, and now oh dear oh dear Oh dear. That is not what you want to see happen. That is really not what I wanted to see. Lewis Vaughn off. Straight off. Not even the orange injury. It's straight off. And that could really damage your chances um, of success in this competition and the league. As uh, the ball is played forward, McGregor chases. Um, it looks like Cliftonville is still sticking with 4-3-3. They obviously think they're getting more out of the game with it, so credit to them for sticking to that. As Jason Thompson loses the ball, Johnston winning it back um, in bizarre fashion. McGregor, McGrandles, Stevenson. There's lots of space out wide left, and Stevenson has just given that away. Hughes now getting closed down by Andy Rose, man marking as I told him to. Um, he's going to get booked here, I would imagine. There's no way that could be a red card, surely. Uh, I always worry when you get these highlights like that. Nope, he's not getting booked for that. 
but he's a little bit out of position so he's got to backtrack as uh, Cliftonville take the free kick Harkin Knowles wide again to Templeton I'm pretty sure that's not David Templeton uh, Stevenson now winning it but just giving it away again it's that kind of play that just invites trouble Cliftonville now play it into the box I don't believe it <laughs> all right all right enough of this um, this game sometimes just drives you mad and now it looks as though from being in the most dominant position possible we are staring at a defeat and getting put out of the competition Cliftonville having two shots on target from four attempts scoring with both we've had 15 efforts on target and only scored once and we've lost our top goal scorer our key player as uh, Cliftonville now just recycling the ball possibly getting a chance here McHattie winning the header Rose winning it Winchester now to Harkin and got to get that ball back we do McGrandles McGregor turns around sees no one in support there Blue Jersey's coming forward that is just not going to cut it that is so poor uh, and also noticing Scott Fraser uh, not performing well and not interested so really not helping the team with that kind of attitude and uh, we're staying in defeat here boys this this is not going to do um, we're going to have to change things around um, now do we have wide options well ok I've taken off Scott Fraser so I don't really have any wide options on the right Stevenson can't play there. McGrandles can play wide right uh, there. Johnston don't really have any other strikers. Um, okay, it might be a case here of going like for like. I'm not usually a big fan of it, um, but we don't really have many other options. Now, obviously, we don't want to play it out of defence anymore. We really want to just go route one. Um, now that we've got a target man on in, uh, in Jordan White and um, it's asking a lot it's asking a lot of them as uh, Cliftonville now again with the ball Harkin Knowles Harkin again playing it out wide and this is what we should have been doing we really should have been making use of our width a um, couple of highlights you saw there was space out in that left wing with McCarty we just haven't played it out there um, I probably should have told them to exploit the flanks as uh, the header away from Osho but nobody there to pick it up just letting Cliftonville work it in with another chance here Hughes out wide again once more Templeton not getting closed down two men come on to him there McCarty wins it back and he's launching it forward now McGregor turns again nobody there supporting him he's got all to do himself winds up the shot and uh, it's saved we'll go out for a corner it's going to be a nervy finish here boys um, right that's the substitutions underway now so we are at 4-3-3 as the corner comes in headed away McCatty will chase it down swings it back in Mooney picks it up forward big ball forward Hughes is there five Wraith players managed to stop him but that clock is ticking down. That clock is really ticking down. We've got very little time left. And um, if ever we're going to score, it's got to be now. I think I'm going to have to push Stevenson up as well. Uh, if I can get a chance to actually make that substitution. Not that I think it's going to make a great deal of difference. Um, it's too little too late. I cannot believe we're going to go out with with that many number of shots at goal Rose takes the effort <laughs> wow what a strike uh, is that his first goal no it was his second goal for us my goodness I was going to say you know the decision making there not to pass 
when there was players there, but he's just absolutely leathered that top corner. And um, does this go to extra time? That's the big question. Yes, it does. End of 90 minutes. Um, big question is what to do tactic wise. That, I mean, okay, that is really quite attacking. I think, I think I'm just going to go back to this. And I think what we'll do is get rid of the route one. Um, yeah, okay, we'll go with that. I'll just go back to it. Um, I may regret it. We've been dominant in this game. Um, the change of formation from Cliftonville did sort of spice things up a little bit, um, but they've scored from a corner uh, to get back into the game. And this one could be going down to the wire to penalties. Um, Jordan White there doing as all good target men do and uh, getting the ball, keeping it and creating a chance potentially. McGregor! Yes! Oh, that's a good goal. That is a good goal. We really, really, really needed that. Um, it gives us a bit of a cushion now. I'm really disappointed that it's actually gone to extra time here, but, um, you know, showing some resilience. McGregor winding up the effort long before the ball gets to him. First time. And that's a cracking finish from the youngster. And it puts us 3-2 up as we approach the end of the first half of extra time. A second, well, fourth goal now, a second goal in extra time here would really help us out. Jordan White certainly seems to be doing quite a good job as the target man. He's holding that ball up well, and he's scored. I did not expect that. It was quite a weak effort. I can't remember the last time I've seen a, a game where I've had 40 shots <laughs> goal. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was a uh, good touch there. On the turn, goalkeeper will be distraught. He's like that. And, and it may just be enough now to take us through to that semi-final. And from staring at the jaws of defeat uh, with minutes to go, Andy Rose scoring a fantastic goal and then scoring two goals in the first half of extra time, it has really just turned things around as uh, Cliftonville now really kind of have to go for it, but they're not changing the formation. They are sticking uh, with 4-3-3. Three, three. And this is why I would suggest you keep um, the formation of your opponents up so you know what they're going to and you can adjust. It's not really... Football isn't a game where you should just be able to play the same formation over and over and over, and um, it's going to work every single time. So, yeah, that, that's a good tip. As uh, Stevenson losing out there to Ives, played forward. Osho not going up for the header. And this could be 4-3 here. We've lost our man. Hughes is there and that's a terrible finish. Um, yeah, they should have done better there. McCatty will now take the throw to Rose. Uh, we've made all three substitutions, so we don't really have any options to, to kind of get fitter. Uh, fresher legs on. That's a crazy challenge from Ioma. He's he's lunged in there, and now Dempster's breaking forward. Osho closes him down. Fortunately, the shot is rather poor, and it's still four two. Ten minutes left. I I'm still not going to count my chickens here, as uh, Cliftonville try and work another chance. Knowles and it's four three. Simple goal, and. Um, yeah, it's going to be an early finish now, as uh, we've we've really just defended poorly again there. Mooney just picking out Knowles, one touch, taking a, a knock actually there um, off of Andy Rose, which might have just diverted it past the keeper. Um, we need the team to concentrate here. Just want that clock to get to 120 now, as uh, White... We'll get another chance here, possibly, will he? He wins a penalty. And this is a big moment. A goal here guarantees us a spot in the semi-final. A miss, and who knows, Cliftonville might be able to get a winner. Uh, it's not, not a winner, an equaliser. 
Has uh, is it Andy Rose taken this? Is it Andy Rose? It is. Now, if he can score a goal like he did just before full time, he should be able to finish from 12 yards. And let's see if he can put this away. He does. Rolls it down the centre. And I tell you what, it takes some balls to do that um, at that moment in the game. You know, he's not decided to put his laces through it. He's just calmly played that down the middle. Uh, no pace in it at all, really. And that's 5-3, and that will surely be the end of this game. The players are absolutely knackered, so you'll probably find we're not going to do very well in our next game domestically. Well, this is, I say domestically, it's not a European tie, is it? Um, it might be in Northern Ireland, but it's still a Scottish competition. As Templeton breaks away, 15 seconds left, Osho winning the header. Uh, I am disappointed with our defensive performance today. Um, could have been a lot better. This game could have been a lot easier. Uh, but the important thing is, boys, we are through to the semi-final. We are still on track for success in this competition. Um, I am just going to have to say that they did well calmly because shouldn't really have gone to extra time with that. Um, that's astonishing, the stats. Absolutely astonishing. Um, Andy Rose picking up man of the match. Um, he would get my rating for man of the match with his uh, his dramatic goal just before full time uh, saving us and sparing our blushes so we are through and I would expect how oh here we go here we go broken collarbone 8 weeks to 3 months I know we are in the red but I need him back as quickly as possible um, and that is a huge huge blow Hopefully Jack Harper will be back. He's two days in rehabilitation um, and he will take over up front. Potentially Jordan White might get a goal. Um, he did well in that game, but who knows. So anyway, boys, uh, where are we uh, in terms of the stages? When do, you, when do you draw the semi-final? Is it tomorrow? It is, right. As ever, I'm going to... Um, Four dice can go. There you go. Knew you would back down. Most players do. Uh, we will see who we have when the draw is made. And here it is. So Thistle, Queen of the South, TNS. Um, I'm not too bothered really who we get. I think it's going to be a pretty uh, similar game no matter who it is. And it's Queen of the South. So Queen of the South stand in the way of us making the first final of a cup competition in the series and that will be the next episode I'll come back for I would imagine um, actually when is it actually drawn sorry for always hopping about back and forth I just want to make sure that I get the right uh, details but it doesn't look as though they've actually said when it's taking place so you need to continue I think don't you um, and hopefully we can actually get a date for it so I can see when the next episode's going to be uh, no not going to tell us oh no there it is it's way 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 down no that will not be the next episode the next episode will given the fact it's Queen of the South we're playing um, I'm probably not going to do that game um, maybe the Hamilton game maybe the Alloa game somewhere around there or St Mirren actually usually give us a good run um, we'll see, we'll see how I play uh, but I will certainly be covering that Queen of the South match um, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode uh, thanks for watching and sticking with it uh, I certainly hope I provided some entertainment um, it gave me a bit more of a shock uh, than I was anticipating with how that first half went I thought it was going to be comfortable uh, if you have liked the episode please leave a like and a comment really do appreciate it and until the next time guys I'll see you when I see you.